the GNOME desktop environment, and I'm going to say GNOME most of the time, so just bear with me, is one of the most popular and widely used graphical user interfaces for Linux and other Unix-like operating systems. Personally, I have a weird love-hate relationship with it. I think the vanilla GNOME desktop is quirky and not intuitive at times, kind of like my reaction to the Mac desktop actually. But some of the tweaked versions of GNOME are quite enjoyable, like Pop OS. Anyway, the forthcoming GNOME version 45 will have a change that could impact a lot of us, both users and developers. But let's take a quick look back at how we got to where we are today. GNOME was initiated in 1997 by two Mexican software developers, Miguel de Icaza and Federico Mena. Their goal was to create a free and open source desktop environment that was user friendly and accessible to everyone. The project gained momentum and was officially announced in 1999. The first stable release of GNOME, GNOME 1.0, was launched in March 1999. It featured a simple, clean interface, a panel for launching applications, and support for themes and customization. GNOME 1.x continued to evolve with several point releases. A major milestone for GNOME came with the release of GNOME 2.0 in June 2002. This version introduced significant improvements in terms of usability and performance. GNOME 2.x became the default desktop environment for many Linux distributions and remained so for nearly 10 years. It was known for its simplicity and productivity-focused design. GNOME underwent a major redesign with the release of GNOME 3 in April 2011. This version introduced a GNOME shell, a new user interface paradigm with a more modern and streamlined look. While GNOME 3 received uh, <clears throat> mixed reactions, initially due to its departure from the GNOME 2 style, it has continued to evolve with each subsequent release. GNOME 40 was released in March 2021. It immediately follows version 3, but with a new version numbering and a faster release cycle. GNOME 40 organized the activities overview in a horizontal fashion, instead of using a vertical design like its predecessor. To address user demands for more customization and flexibility, the GNOME community introduced GNOME extensions, which allow users to enhance and modify the desktop environment's functionality. This feature made GNOME more adaptable to individual preferences. Currently, GNOME 45 has now reached the release candidate stage, but it has a change that will impact many users. It's altering the way extensions work, which will impose strict versioning requirements. GNOME 45 already has the typical tweaks and bug fixes, but a blog post from GNOME developer Florian Mulner describes the changes to the way the extensions are to be handled. Broken extensions are not that unusual with GNOME, but this time around it appears to be a pretty sweeping change that will likely affect all of us who have any GNOME extension, including Ubuntu, Zorin OS, and Pop OS users. Ubuntu adds its own dock, which is a version of the existing dash to dock extension. Zorin has a whole suite which transforms GNOME into a choice of layouts similar to various versions of Windows and other OSs. The blog post itself has a lot of technical information, most of which I don't really understand, but the gist of it is that GNOME 45 switches to a new ECMA script modules system. ESM for short. The result is that extensions for GNOME 44 and earlier won't work in GNOME 45, and extensions built using the new ESM won't work in older versions of GNOME. If you have an existing extension, you have to port it to use ESM. So what does this mean? Well, GNOME's extensions ecosystem is varied and extensive. There are lots of them. And even if you're not one to tinker with such things, some distros already incorporate them, as mentioned previously. The good and the bad. On the bad side, the GNOME Foundation appears to want more homogeneity, more control. It is zealous about advancing the GNOME brand. 
Consider the Adwaida theme in GNOME 3 and the resulting controversy surrounding this. So they are not averse to using the big stick. On the good side, it should be helpful to adopt an upstream standard for handling modules. This might result in extensions and GNOME having the right versioning and alignment. It might be simpler to keep extensions updated and compatible after developers switch to the new system. Up until now, it's often been a chore to keep ex existing extensions working with different versions of GNOME. With version 45, it should be easier going forward, but the actual transition sounds like it might be a bit more disruptive than previous GNOME updates. I've been using Pop! OS again for a few weeks now, which in itself has a modified version of GNOME, and I think I have only one extension in place, but I'd like to keep it. So let me know in the comments if there are GNOME users out there who are aware or concerned about this, or will you just hunker down and wait till the dust settles before upgrading to GNOME 45? Hey, thanks for watching. Check out the links below.